Hi guys, it's Vin with Boris FX, and in this quick tutorial for Vegas Pro 18, we're going to add a logo inside this actor's shirt with the help of Power Mesh, a brand new tracking engine for organic and warped surface tracking inside of Mocha Pro 2021. Okay, so here we are inside of Vegas Pro, and I have a clip of my actor here. Now what I want to do is add a logo to his shirt. Now the logo can really be anything, an image, a clip, it doesn't matter, so long as it has alpha. Now to really do something unique with this effect, I've imported this animated fish logo. It's a simple quick time movie with Alpha, but I thought it would be cool to have an animated logo motion tracked to his shirt. Now in Vegas, when dealing with an Alpha clip, I'm going to first drag it into my second layer right above my original background clip. To get the Alpha to work correctly, I'm going to right click and select Properties. This will pop up a window and in the Media tab, I'll change the Alpha channel to Pre-Multiplied. When I hit apply, Vegas will composite that over the clip below it. Now what I need to do is motion track my actor, and to do that I'm going to select Mocha Pro and drop that onto my background clip. Now you'll want to make sure you're using Mocha Pro 2021 to access the features I'm going to show you. Once applied, I'm going to launch the Mocha UI, and the first thing I want to do before we look at any tracking is I'm going to create a spline shape around the area where I want to insert my fish logo. Something like that. Now Mocha is a planar tracker, meaning it's going to track all of the pixels along a certain plane. This works really well when I have a flat surface like a wall or a sign. But what about when I have a surface that's constantly changing? For example, a t-shirt. As our actor moves, his shirt is going to move with him, and that's going to create multiple shifting surfaces that distort and warp with his body. If I track like this, Mocha is only going to look at one plane. Any object that I try to insert isn't going to take into account the warping of his shirt. So we need to track the movement of more than one plane. And for that, we're going to use the Mesh Tracker feature, which can be accessed here in the Tracking module. But before we do that, I want to give you a really detailed look at what Mesh Tracker can do. Let's take a look at this clip here of an actor winking at the camera. I've drawn a spline shape around his face and removed the area around his eyes. Now there are two kinds of Mesh Generation available, Automatic and Uniform. Automatic will be the option that we will likely use the most. It's going to create a spline mesh intuitively, looking for contrasting pixels. With automatic selected, if I hit generate, you can see that it quickly generates a mesh. Down here in his beard, we get more splines because there's more contrast than, say, up here on his forehead. You can also see that each triangle generated attempts to follow the planar surface. If I change the mode to uniform and regenerate the mesh, you can see that the splines are simply a uniform grid. Both of these modes will give you great results, but for this example, and our logo insert, I'm going to select Automatic. Mesh size will control the size of individual cells. Higher values will result in larger, but fewer cells in the mesh. If I lower it, I can create hundreds of tiny cells. Now if you imagine that Mocha is keeping track of all the pixel data in each of those cells, you can imagine that for our purposes, leaving it to around 30 will result in a much faster track. Next, we have Vertices on Spline. Now this is typically on as default, and what it does is it forces the mesh vertices to link to the main spline. So for example, if you see here this part of the mesh isn't connected to the main spline. When I enable vertices on spline and regenerate, it creates more points connected to the spline for a finer, more detailed mesh. Adaptive contrast is an important function as it will increase the sensitivity of the pixel contrast detection, generating a more detailed mesh. Because our t-shirt has a lot of movement, and because for this example we want to make sure that we capture all the motion around our actor's eyes and around his nose, we're definitely going to want to enable this. There are two other options here. Smoothness will control how sensitive the mesh is. A higher amount will result in less sensitivity to change, whereas a lower value will increase that sensitivity. For this and our insert, we'll keep that at its default. Warp spline, however, is quite important. We'll want to make sure that this is enabled, because what this will do is allow the main spline around his face and eyes to warp along with the mesh. And this will allow us to use all of that motion tracking data mapped to the movement of his face, or in the case of our logo actor, to his shirt. With that set up, I'm going to come down to my motion parameters and select Perspective and Mesh. Now you don't have to select Perspective to activate mesh tracking, but since he turns his head a bit, let's go ahead and enable that, and then hit Track Forward. I'll speed this up, but you can see that as Mocha tracks, that mesh is warping and distorting along with his face, especially around the eyes. And this is going to be very important when adding digital makeup or scars, or adding logos where there is a lot of movement and surface distortion. 
Now once that's done, let's move back to the first frame and jump over to the Stabilize module. Now this is new in Mocha 2021 and it allows you to take your mesh tracking data and stabilize your footage so you can, for example, do some roto painting and other digital work. Now that's something we'll cover in another tutorial, but what I want to show you is how this mesh data works with the footage and how it's different from traditional planar tracking. What I want to do is enable Mesh Warp and select Warp. This is going to warp my footage along with the mesh tracker data. To better see this in action, I'm going to turn off my overlays and enable Use Matte and set that to High. If I render that out a bit and then play that back, you can see just how powerful that mesh tracking is. We're getting all of this motion and tracking data and the crinkles around his eyes and the stretching of his skin as he moves his facial muscles. It's all really very cool. But how does this translate back to our logo actor? Well, let's take what we just learned here and apply it to the spline shape that I drew earlier. Now, as before, I'm going to leave the mode and size at default and make sure that I've enabled vertices on spline and adaptive contrast. This will improve the detail and tracking information for each of these little wrinkles in his shirt. I can leave smoothness at default and I want to make sure that warp spline is enabled. This will allow Mocha to use the push and pull of the mesh to warp the spline shape we created. Now over here, don't forget to enable mesh so that when I'm done, I can hit track and there you go. Now you'll want to make sure before we go any further that you show the planar surface up here and that you align it to our image. The surface is where we're going to assign the logo and we want to make sure that it's aligned to our spline shape. Now let's move the CTI to the first frame and go to the Stabilize module. This is important because what we're attempting to do isn't to actually insert a logo. We're going to stabilize one on top of our actor using the mesh tracking data. Yep, we're going to do this in a completely unique way to speed up our workflow and incorporate our alpha footage. When we move to the Stabilize module from tracking, the frame data where we were is passed into that Stabilize module. By moving the CTI to the first frame before entering the Stabilize module, Mocha now links the tracking data to the first frame, which can also manually be set here to zero. Now once we've done that, let's save all of this and head back to Vegas. Now the question is, how do we link all of this tracking data to our fishy? We want it to move with him after all, and well this is actually the easy part. Simply right click on the background clip and select copy. Then, right click on the logo layer, in this case our fishy, and choose selectively paste event attributes. This will bring up a window and allow you to choose what you want to paste. Select video event effects and effect keyframes. Now this is going to paste all of that Mocha mesh tracking data onto our fish, which will now allow us to use all of that mesh data to distort our logo. Lastly, I'm going to go up to the module render tab and select stabilize warp and then enable module render. When I play that back, there you go. Our fish logo is motion tracked to his shirt and because we use the new mesh tracker, any distortion in the fabric as he moves is reflected in the logo for seamlessly realistic results. We only scratched the surface of what Mocha Pro 2021 is capable of, and some of the new features will be covered in later tutorials. But when it comes to adding a logo using the all new Power Mesh tool inside of Mocha Pro 2021, that's all there is to it. I'm Vin Morreale with Boris FX, and for more great tutorials and to download your copy of Mocha Pro 2021, don't forget to check out the Boris FX website. Take care.